I had seven wolf encounters and this is the second part of this adventure. To recap, we took a float plane to a remote location along the coast of British Columbia and our first few days were something I will never forget. This remote location with its unpredictable weather will challenge us at every turn, testing our survival skills as we overcome obstacles to bring you the best footage and video this place has to offer. If you are new to this channel, my name is Matt Shannon and I am a full-time photographer in beautiful British Columbia. Whether you're here to learn, be inspired, or simply enjoy some stunning visuals, you've come to the right place. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. We hear the wolves howling. She's somewhere in there. Now just before we heard the wolves howl off in the woods, we witnessed a wolf and bear encounter. Then the wolf came over and I got to take some great photographs. If you want to check out that video, I'll have a link down below and a link at the end of this video. So let's continue with our story. So there's a black bear right there and the wolf came walking down. They met one another. The wolf kept on going, filming, photographing, incredible. And the wolf seemed pretty young. It came right out, like filled up my viewfinder. It was so close. I think what's important is to just stay still, be patient, and uh, don't surprise them. So we're out in the open right here. And between us and them is just a few rocks, and then they have the woods behind. So it's important to allow them to have free access to the woods, don't want to come between them out on the beach and the woods. So great. And there's some eagles flying overhead. Now I do find a lot of bear poop on the trails and on the beach and you're probably wondering have I captured it actually taking place and yes here's some footage. Now this bear knows that we are here and some of the photos that I like to capture photographing bears are them walking on logs showing their claws and you kind of want to get all the legs kind of spread out kind of showing their their full length of body. Now the primary food source is like sedge grass or um, in this case like fermented seaweed. Ewan and I actually grabbed some of the seaweed where the bear was kind of eating there earlier and it did have a really sweet smell to it. Of course we didn't eat it, but maybe we should have tried. Now there is a lot of harsh light here. It is the middle of the day. There's been a few times where some clouds have come in and made it a little bit softer, but the end of the day, obviously the early morning and evenings are the best time to shoot. You don't always get a complete story that way. This is the middle of the day. This is the wildlife that's out. And so for some of those comments that are just like, well, those are junk photos. 
I do understand I'm not going to be submitting them for any any competitions, uh, but you know the bears are out during this time, and I'm and I'm following the action. I'm trying to put together the story of this this trip, and it being in the middle of the day is just the way it is. Now over to my left in the little bay here, I notice a sea otter that's swimming on his back. He has a sea urchin or a shell that he's kind of biting into and, and eating. So uh, keep your head on a swivel because there is wildlife all around. Now I also want to point out that the tide is coming up and our only way back to the campground is actually past this big black bear. Now he was super chill, he knew we were there. He's just happy eating his food and uh, he got quite close. We just need to be patient and wait for him to go off to his nap in the tree line there. So this is us just hanging out and I'll show you where the, the water line is here in a minute. So the water that's in the foreground, that is the ocean that's coming in and it actually reaches the, where the black bear is. You can't tell because of all the rocks. So we're just waiting patiently for the bear to go to bed. So after like an hour or two hours of shooting and filming, we made it past the bear and that little beach there, right to our tents before the tide kind of washed away the footprints of the wolves that we seen earlier that day. Nothing was disturbed. We make sure that all of the food is safely up in a tree and then we wash all of our dishes and stuff uh, in the ocean. So there's no food in and around our tent. Speaking of food, it's time to eat. Hi everyone, I don't have a sponsor for this video, but I do have workshops that are coming up that I think you might be interested in. The end of October, I have a multi-day photography workshop and there are a few spots left. We photograph landscape, waterfalls, seascapes, and there's, there's a ton of information there and I'll have a link down below. Uh, next year, I've got at least three workshops and they're starting to fill up. I've got an eagle, photography workshop as well as a grizzly bear workshop so be sure to check out madshannon.ca slash workshops to go ahead and find out all the information you need and book the spots before they fill up that's all i want to say now let's get back out into the wild now sunset was soon approaching and it looked like it was going to be 
a real banger and all I actually had was my telephoto lens for wildlife. The birds were a lot of fun to photograph and I didn't really get any good shots of the sea otters but uh, I had a plan for taking pictures of sunset without having to run all the way back to the campsite and that was to stitch all of my images together. Now this right here is the power of a telephoto lens where you can get close-up shots really amplifying that big sun and also stitch things together for landscapes. So woke up the next morning and it was a perfect day to see some wildlife. It was a bit cloudy, some nice color out there. And uh, I was up a little earlier, didn't see anything. And then um, now I'm kind of packing up my tent because today we leave. And I'm always checking both sides of my tent. I've got the hubba hubba two-man tent here. And you never know if there's some, uh, some bear or something sniffing out the other side of your tent that you don't hear. So yeah, today is the day that we pack and leave, so it's nice to see some good weather. Now there's something about this morning that just felt like it was gonna be epic. First was the Stellar's J. They're always fun to watch. Just make sure you don't have any food lying around or else they're gonna nab it. There was also uh, a few hummingbirds chasing one another. These are the Rufus hummingbirds. Very beautiful, kind of that orange and rust color. So I really enjoy trying to photograph these guys. And of course, one of the black bears was out. So it seemed like everything was lining up, waiting for the last actor to come out onto the stage. So after I flew the drone for a little bit, I realized that I didn't have a whole lot of time so I need to start packing up and getting everything ready for the plane. Uh, there's a lot of work that kind of goes into this, making sure that you've got everything, you're not le leaving anything behind. So then I go in and grab the food, which is one of the last things we kind of take down and bring out to the beach. And lo and behold, what was coming up the beach uh, <laughs> was a bit of a surprise. Now I just came out of the woods with the food. I didn't have any time to kind of film my reaction. I just grabbed my camera, which was ready just in case something like this happened. And I just started filming.
You know those hummingbirds that I was talking about earlier this morning? Check this out. They almost ran into this wolf chasing one another. I actually thought it was some bees or something, but no, it was the hummingbirds. Now this is where our interaction with the wolf gets very interesting. So it's smelling the area where my tent was and uh, what it's grabbing there is actually my GoPro. I take a look at it a little bit later, but at this point, Ewan, who is right beside me, he actually stands up, getting the wolf's attention so that it moves on. We don't want the wolf getting accustomed to our things or any human things here um, that would cause any sort of risk for the wolf and for the humans. Now, this time was very, very short. I managed to take a ton of photographs um, the wolf moved quite a bit, almost like it was posing for us. There was no aggression, it was really just curiosity. And uh, before you know it, the wolf was on its way to the next, to the next thing. So here's some photographs, I hope you enjoy them. This interaction was truly unforgettable. Alright, we had our sixth encounter with a wolf. We're all packed up here. Luckily I had my camera right out of the bag and then I seen him coming up the beach. Super exciting, blends right in, but sure enough it was a wolf. And uh, I'm gonna check out what he was sniffing at. Uh, I packed up my tent and I brought everything over to this log right here because we're going to get ready to to get picked back up on the plane. And let's see, what was he looking at? So I thought he was going to try and nab my Sony camera. But look at this, he was going after the GoPro. He didn't bite it or anything. No teeth mark. Uh, but he pushed it off off the stump here so something smelly maybe maybe just maybe he was offended that this was a gopro 7 brought here to the beach sorry wolf i have thought he would be interested in my socks that i have here underneath my sony so we want to make sure that uh the wolves don't get accustomed to like, especially food. Food's probably the biggest thing, which if we're making coffee or any of that, we, uh, we put it way up in the tree, any of the food there. If we're rinsing out any pots, pans, we do that right in the ocean. We don't, we don't have any food, no smells of food. Uh, you don't want to dribble or drop anything. If you do, it gets scooped up and you bring it into the ocean. And uh, you can't say that for everyone who visits here. It's a pretty remote spot, but if uh, all it takes is one or two and the wolves will get very, very comfortable, especially if they associate uh, humans with food, that is a very, very bad thing. Because then you have wolf attacks, them getting aggressive, and they're just trying to feed their, their pack. They're young, they're each one. 
Yeah, I think today's activity was was curiosity, was not scared. Uh, the ears weren't like pinned back, no raised hair. But uh, yeah, safety first. Now our plane did arrive and it takes about 10, 15 minutes for it to taxi in. And just as we were grabbing our gear to bring it down to the water line, a wolf came walking along the rocky shoreline. It was as if he called the float plane himself, like it was delivering pizza to him. But I'm sure he was just doing his normal rounds, looking along the shoreline for food, because this is the time of day where the tide is low and where the wolves would be out. Now I often get asked whether or not I take stills for my video and I, and I don't. What I'm doing is I'm switching between video and photos, trying to capture a different moment, uh, then going back to video, filming the wolf as it moves along. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm basically just flopping back and forth to capture what I think would be a cool composition and also filming the behavior and the movement of the wolf to put together this story. I will be in a future video telling you more about my video settings, how I set up my camera, maybe some of my techniques with my video head, tripod. So yeah, be sure to subscribe if you're interested in seeing that. And let me know down in the comments what you think of my storytelling in this way. There's the wolf right there, and that's our plane. But we got a pack. I've been so appreciative of all the support I'm getting on this YouTube channel. My last video gave so many warm, heartfelt comments, and uh, I really appreciate it. If you did love this, please give me that thumbs up. It really helps out this video and this channel. And if you aren't subscribed, think about subscribing. Thank you so much again for watching, and I hope to see you on the next episode.